It's been raining a lot for what's supposed to be... Is it summer at this point? I, I think it is. It would be summer. Yeah, we know it's male. But yeah, we've got exams. Maybe it's better we don't know much about the case right now. We can focus on studying. Not that we've been focusing on studying, we've mostly been seeing a nurse at the hospital. I feel like we haven't seen Miss Sofue in ages. And we come to another line that looks very weird when viewed out of context. In guides that just don't give you the question, but only the answer, which I've seen a few of them like that. You just see the line, he has no moustache. And that's it. I never really realised that before. Reminds me of how Mario gained his moustache due to them just removing a pixel above his mouth. One small mistake making its way into history. Well, the main thing that that reminds me of is Cinderella, where the um, glass slippers were supposed to be fur. They only became glass due to a translation error. And also uh, the persona Neko Shogun, who is based off of a figure who is not supposed to be a cat, but they mistranslated it, and um, that was also due to a stroke issue. They forgot a stroke from the character, and it um, became the character for cat. Today we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to go to Okina and back in a single day and head over there for a quest. This is why, ages ago, we needed to pick up a gentleman's tux in rare chess in Yukiko's castle. Um, okay then. Well, hopefully it's not us because that might be legally questionable. This is kind of a weird hint because it makes you think that she's referring to the butler outfits from Croco Fur. That's actually what I thought in my first playthrough. But actually, it's the I mean, I suppose the wedding thing, it doesn't really make sense for the butler part. But yeah, like originally I thought that it was the, um, the butler suit. But it's actually the gentleman's tux from Yukiko's castle. Three royal jelly. And that's that done. Also, these people outside the movies tend to have some pretty good dialogue. The film buff girl also has some great lines. And while we're here, may as well take another shot at the Jack Frost doll. Yep, no luck. It's just like real crane games. Especially the ones that have things like Nintendo Switches as prizes. Never, ever, ever trust those, because you'd know they'd have to make a lot of money off of failed attempts to um, make a profit out of that. Yeah, th those stacking block ones in particular are, I'm pretty sure, proven to be completely rigged. There have been some pretty good videos on how arcade games are kind of scams. We're breaking up the fox today, by the way. Where someone's actually made a machine that can press the button, like, within less than a millisecond, and it still sometimes misses the timing, which... If that doesn't prove that it's randomized, nothing will. And we're going to continue reading uh, English Made Easy tonight. I'm so sorry for cutting off Nanako, but um, I wanted to talk about something uh, that I was alluding to earlier. When it comes to... Um, okay, we've got these paprikas here. Which colours have we got? Oh, we've got one of each. That's pretty cool. I think I bought more corn as well. But when it comes to... 
to Okina and how some people actually felt that it heavily ruined an aspect of the story in Golden. So some people think that Okina being within driving distance of Inaba ruins the whole plot point that there's nothing to do in Inaba and um, like the whole concept behind Shadow Yosuke in a way and a lot of other plot points that rely on the fact that Inaba is a boring sleepy town with not much to do. Though, to be honest, I dispute this, and the reason why is I Ebihara's social link. It's identical even in the uh, original game. Like, there are no changes in Golden. And in that social link, when you start it, you go to Okina and back, you go at lunch, and you are back by the end of the school day. And you have time to go shopping and frequent quite a lot of places there. So yeah, honestly, I think Okina was still within driving distance of Inova, uh, even in the original game. I don't think it's really contradicting anything. And this is that study session that you had to have accepted the phone call for. It's kind of jerkish. That's the risk of borrowing notes, you might end up borrowing notes from someone who sucks at that subject. I love this option, and it's the one you have to say here. I'm sure a lot of people are. You know, a lot of people think you were separated at birth with the Persona 3 protagonist. We get a book, Polyland. And Shie and Yukiko showed up too. So we're going to be getting points with all of them. Yeah, I'm sure you appreciate the fact that Shie is here. Not sure Daisuke really does though. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Chi will become closer soon, Yukiko, Daisuke, and Ko, okay. I, I, I keep forgetting that they're actually only one social link despite the fact that it's uh, two people, so even though there, are, there were five people there including the protagonists, we only get points towards uh, three social links. Okay, so today we're going to be doing something very interesting that we've never done before. Checking out Noah, of course, it's not the home shopping channel. <laughs> I just wanted to um, to say that, but no, we actually are doing something we've never done before, but I want to see what's available here. Purple suit, that's actually pretty good. Plus two giant candy that if I do buy this, I will likely never end up using. Two diamond shields. Hmm. The purple suit's actually pretty solid, though. It's expensive, but we've been doing uh, quite a bit of the hospital janitor job. That's basically four days worth of that job. But we also got 5,500 yen from Juness, so we're doing decently well in terms of money. We're actually making pretty good money even outside of the dungeon now. And it'll only get better once we can accept the tutoring job. That one pays a lot, but you need max expression for that, so we're still not quite there yet. What we're actually going to do tonight is, uh, before we go to the riverbank, I may as well go ahead and grab some more breadcrumbs. I have a lot of Tatsuhime ladybugs to give her because I've been really bad at the timing for the bug nets, so I always keep getting the worst bugs. But yes, we are actually going to fish today. Before that though, we need to talk to this dog. Huh, that's interesting. We are unlocking something out of having the shovel. It's even better than I remember it being. I forgot that you needed the shovel for this. We get a bone, and guess what? It's a weapon for Yosuke. Yeah, Yosuke always gets the joke weapons, although this one's actually really, really good. I like the description there. Pretty high attack power and high critical hit rate. I'm gonna have quite a few weapons to show off with him when we're next in the TV, but anyway, 
It's time to fish for the first time. What we're looking for is two red goldfish. And we're probably going to get a tutorial on how fishing works now. Uh, or not. It might come a little bit later. Fishing works completely differently in Golden compared to the vanilla game. So if you're playing along with the PS2 version, you might want to look up a separate video or guide for this because it works differently. In that game, there's just one generic type of bait, but here you have multiple different kinds. Either the bugs you catch at the shrine or the breadcrumbs you can trade for at the pub. The breadcrumbs are what we want because they get you red goldfish. And these ones let you catch a few other things. Huge fish are not bad to have because they're a pretty good SP restoration item. They're also good for feeding the cat for that quest. So once we drop some bait in... When the bobber goes down, that's our cue to press the circle button. But before there's a bite, you can press the circle button to retract your line. And you won't lose the bait. Remember this, because it will be very useful later. The rippling is basically an indication of how rare the fish is on the line. So when you're using the top quality bait, you want to make sure to reel in early if you don't get the maximum amount of ripples. Otherwise, it's a huge waste of the bait. The old man by the riverbank will actually tell you that if you talk to him during the daytime. Now, once you press the circle button, we have this bobber on the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to explain all of this now because I will not have time once I'm actually reeling the fish in. You want to keep the bobber in the blue area. If it's in yellow, that's kind of bad, and if the bobber even goes into red, the fish will start pulling away. The main goal of fishing is to get the fish as close to you as possible before the bobber even goes into the red. You can hold left and right on the analog stick to slightly influence the direction of the bobber. It won't be pulled that much for the weaker fish though, and you hold the circle button while it's in the blue zone. If you hold circle while it's in yellow or orange, you'll damage your line, and uh, if you damage it too much, the line will snap and the fish will get away. Uh, yes, tutorial, thank you. It's just telling me to keep holding down the circle button. So this is a very easy fish to get. There's a red goldfish. And we need one more of those. Your diligence determines the number of times you can fish before you're forced to return home. That looks like the same splash, so I think it's another red goldfish. It's funny, I actually want the lowest quality fish out of this, because it's needed for a quest. Okay, that's actually a smaller blue area, so I think that's a rarer fish. No, it's another goldfish. Okay, then. Might have been mistaken about the blue area. So now that I've got the two goldfish that I need, I'm going to try going for a bigger fish here. Okay, I forget which one that is, but that's a lot of splashing. For, um, for the bigger fish, you want to wait until you've read Expert Fishing before you go for them, because that unlocks a new type of fishing technique that really improves your chances of catching them. Yep, that's a huge fish. I'm going to try and go for one more. Okay, those splashes do not look like the kind for huge fish, so I'm going to pull in early. A lot of people have trouble with the fishing minigame, and I can really understand why. It's definitely a pain, but it's definitely learnable, and I find that from all of the playthroughs of this game that I've done, I can catch fish pretty consistently now. So yeah, you, you do learn how to do it. Oh, yep, it's pulling in a direction there. That's not good. You learn it eventually. Just practice, practice, practice. I would definitely recommend... Making a save before you fish, and just using some time to practice. Because trust me, you will need to practice fishing. Because, let's just say there's a certain much, much, much bigger fish that will be forced to catch later on in the game. And that one is is going to be very, very tough if we don't fully understand how the minigame works. It's definitely not luck at all. It is pure skill, but it does take a while to fully get the hang of the system. Today's Monday, and today's actually going to be kind of important. It's going to be a little bit of a turning point. It's also the day before exams, but we don't really care too much about that. More corn! We must have corn! We must have all the corn! 
I've actually been informed that there's a bit of a glitch involving the corn, and I might want to try showing that a bit later. We can't really do the thing that we need to for uh, that glitch yet. It involves a quest that hasn't quite unlocked yet. Your unwanted harem is gone today. <laughs> what did you say there? Careful about thinking like that, or you might end up like another kanji in the future. And we're at the shrine because we're accepting the next fox request today. Which is one that we've already prepared a little bit in advance for. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone's scared of- oh right, you mean the actual animal and not the um, horrifying abomination CGI things from that film. I have not actually seen that, and um, I don't know if I should one day just for morbid curiosity. I have watched the pitch meeting video on YouTube that's actually pretty funny. Actually, no, it's really funny. I, I've... Yeah, kind of got into those semi-recently, but I kind of had to stop watching them because they got very, very addictive. But now that we've accepted that, the person who made that request is at the floodplain. There he is. I just heard a name, that doesn't really imply much. Yes, they do, but, um... <laughs> a cow? Yeah, we have to say the right thing here. But I'm all for helping someone overcome their fear of cats. I mean, I'm a cat person in real life, so I don't really have this problem, but I did used to be very scared of dogs when I was a young child, and I got over that when my dad got a puppy, and um, she was actually a really nice dog. So... Yeah, that's how I overcame things. This is definitely the best option. But he says the same thing for everything. But we have seen a cat before near the Dojima residence. We need to bring that guy over here. <laughs> well, I mean, admittedly, uh, cat tongues are extremely rough and it doesn't really feel that nice to be licked by one. But that's all we can do with that one today. We'll be coming back for that quest later. No, we are not heading home, because today we're going to be <sighs> doing something that I am kind of dreading. A bit. And I'm sure some of you in the comments section might be dreading this too. We're going to be seeing Yukiko today. Please tell me I have a priestess persona. Of course I have Gunga. I keep forgetting Gunga's priestess. Oh, we were just here, and now we're back again. Are you gonna wish for something too? Just a quick thing to point out. I don't think Rank 9 was fully voiced in the PS2 version. In Golden, some of the very significant Social Link ranks are fully voiced now, 
Rank 10 is always voice for party members, and I think it was that way in the original too, but in this one, usually rank 9 and sometimes 8 are also fully voiced. M me? <laughs> Thank you. I'm wishing for everyone's health. For Chie, for you, for the others, and everyone at the inn, too. And I'm wishing to become a woman worthy of you. Finally, I wish for everyone to be able to smile together. Let's begin our prayer. I've decided not to leave Inaba. I never really objected to being the inn's manager per se. I just didn't like the fact that it wasn't up to me. I felt that my life was on rails. Yeah, that was what a lot of your shadow was about, the whole cage. And I thought running away was the only choice for me. But no longer. I want to protect the family inn. After all, it's near to my heart. Um, thank you. I think it's because of you that I realized this. Because you were always by my side. And now, finally, we have someone who will die for us. Yeah, back in the PS2 version, uh, I already said this, but it was a while ago, so I'll say it again. This was the rank 1 social link bonus in that version, which was a bit ridiculous. Um, I wanted to ask you this before. Um, why? Why are you always with me? Is it okay for me to ask? And because we're not in a relationship with anyone at this point, we don't get the warning that this is the platonic and romantic root splits. So, in almost all cases, which option triggers the romance root is usually obvious. In this case, the first two lead to the platonic root, and this one leads to the romance root. All it will do is change rank 10, but characters you're in a relationship with, you will be able to invite them to unique scenes later on in the game. And I'm so sorry, Yukiko fans, but I'm not going to be going for her romance route, so we're going to have to say this option. But don't worry, I have recorded the romance route along with all of the optional romance scenes for all the romantic social links. Except for Ayane, because I picked Drama Club on my New Game Plus where I recorded all the romance routes. So I've already got that video ready, and I might actually upload it unlisted. Just as a warning, it contains optional romance scenes from much later in the game, and those might be considered spoilers. So that's why I'm not going to upload it as a directly listed video yet, but if there's interest, I will upload an unlisted version. I've already made all of the Romance Root videos, they're all ready to go. But for now, I'm so sorry Yukiko. Yukiko is one of the ones that is the most painful to say no to because she definitely is showing interest in the protagonist before this point, but we're going to be staying true to one person this run. Letting her down gently now is much, much better than what happens if you cheat on her later. Just trust me on that. I see. <sighs> yes, precisely. Oh, I just remembered. I have an errand to run. I'll be going now. This will not impact the rate at which the link increases as well. A rank 10 is a rank 10, regardless of its platonic or romantic, and there's only one social link in the game that is slower to rise if you're not on its romance route. It's actually Ayane, so I'll get into that a bit later, but for everyone else, it will not throw off the schedule of any guide you're following, 
regardless of which route you choose. So go with whatever your preference is. But I can at least show that um, the description here is actually different if you went her romance route for this one. It would say something like, you and Yukiko have begun going out. Okay, so expression is still not max, so we're going to go ahead and translate at the work table. And I thought that um, every time that I would do a translation, which is not going to be that often, but I'd give some trivia about the... Um, one time I was working on a fan translation of a game and some of the more interesting elements that came up. One of them that I just st that still sticks out to me is I had to research Japanese shoe sizes because of a certain point in Ace Attorney Investigations 2 where footprints and the victim and other witnesses' shoe sizes were important at a crime scene. And this implies that you is translating English. And yeah, you often get prompts like this, and um, one of them will give you more money. If it's... Ugh, this is hard, though, because if it's written for... Like, it's different depending on whether it's written for a child or if it's by a child. If it's written by a child, then I would write it as a child would, personally. But if it's intended for a child... This is what I do in real life. I would translate it as faithfully as possible and just trust that the original language was directed enough towards children that that would come across in the translation. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, for a child might have meant that it was written for a child part. Uh, just ambiguity is always annoying, especially when it comes to things like this. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard, because when I read the sentence written for a child, I thought it meant, like, written as an adult speaking to a child. But I guess they meant the sentence is written for a child character, or... Ugh, yeah. Always annoying, and you have to deal with that a lot in translations too, but... Yeah, in that case, like, if it's a sentence that's actually written by a child within the original work, then obviously, you know, write it in the translation the way a child would write something. Otherwise, it's not a good translation. And, um, well, yeah, we're in exam time now. So, morale... this was from quite a while ago. This was also from a while ago, but I remember this one. Balance Beam. It's a Japanese phrase that most people who've played this game will know, because it's in a question. But yeah, the shoe sizes thing was really, really interesting, because Japan actually measures shoe sizes just based on centimetres, which I think is way more logical than a lot of other things, but I had to correspond, like, I had to look up what the corresponding American shoe sizes were to the Japanese shoe sizes, because Australia uses a completely different set of shoe sizes, but the Ace Attorney localizations are American-based, so I had to use the American terms. But, um, yeah, if I'm remembering right, this was the kanji that he made the mistake on. This one means heaven, and this one means door, I'm pretty sure. But I, I'm, I'm almost positive that it was this one. Oh, wow, this was from ages ago, but yeah, it's the Meiji period. Of course, in Palace, they have no bonus pay. They make you work harder, and they deduct pay. Oh, okay, I believe this was the King of Hearts? Yes, it was the King of Hearts. And this one was Pascal. We still have more, though. I still wish there was an actual exam theme. And yep, it was this river. The Pai Pai River, actually. And Gakumon no Susume, US Declaration of Independence. That one didn't really require a lot of thinking outside the box. Most of the questions were exactly the same as the ones from, uh, in class. Yes, that is a good sign. I think that means we have actually successfully topped this exam. And that's good because we get a special reward from Nanako for doing that. Uh, it's all over. 
And this is going to be particularly satisfying because it means that Summer Break is coming up. Mm, I'm so sleepy. Yuck! Don't yawn in my face like that! Ugh. Hey, for the third question on the English test, which phrase did you choose? Um... Oh, I went with used to. Oh, wrong again. Guessing that was a tense related question. So much for Chia going abroad. Heck, why leave Inaba? You have so much right here. You're so annoying. Yo. I take it things didn't go well. No more encores. I mean, hi everyone. Whoa, more losers? What do I need to know English for? I can always ask for a translator. How did you do, senpai? Yeah, that actually is worth expression points. Whoa, are you that confident? I think one of the other responses gives you courage, though. Wait, confident about what again? Enough about the exams already. What's going on with the murder case? Hmm. Why don't we head to our special headquarters? We haven't been there in a while. Definitely seems like there's been no progress on that front, though. Mm, I'm kind of bummed. Not just because exams are over, but the whole thing with the police finding a suspect. This gets elaborated on a lot more in the anime, where it actually explores Yuna Okami's character a bit, and he has a lot of concerns that once the case is solved, this group will have no reason to be friends anymore. I mean, we believe that only we could solve this case. And now? Well, we still don't know yet. They haven't made an arrest. So, we gotta sit on our thumbs. Crying out loud. It's nice to have a suspect, but where the hell is he? Just when we needed more info. We're at the end of our rope here. You guys, did, did you hear what I said? Uh, <laughs> this case is as good as solved. Don't worry, kids. It's only a matter of time before we bring in the suspect. I mean, the guy's kidnapping people at random and slaughtering them. We won't rest until we bring him to justice. <laughs> I gotta get going. Just as soon as we find him, apparently. Now, I'm really worried. <laughs> On the other hand, if the police have a search warrant out for the guy, we should stay out of it. Yeah, true. This isn't like rescuing people from the TV. I mean, this could even be dangerous, depending on who we're dealing with here. Yeah. Oh, uh, I just remembered. There was a question on the exam that I didn't get. I think it was the chemical formula HCHO, used for silver mirror reactions. Its 40% solution is known as formalin. So let me see if I'm getting this right. Hydrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, I think? And the question was, what is HCHO? Yeah, this is formaldehyde. Oh, I see. I chose acidic acid. Duh, of course it couldn't have been vinegar. Hey, you had that question too, didn't you, Kanji? Okay, formaldehyde's used in a lot of household products, plywood, glues and adhesives. Okay then. By its name, it sounded like something kind of dangerous. Yeah, you can tell that I haven't really done a lot of uh, chemistry and things like that. Shut up. Don't call me by my first name. Wow, kind of harsh, aren't you? I heard you got a nosebleed when you were around our senpai. Who told you that? Hey, who the hell blabbed about that? Uh, anyways... I'm guessing it was you. Risa-chan, why don't you ask Yukiko to help you study? Hmm? Huh? I guess, but wouldn't you rather ask a senpai of the opposite sex? Senpai, I'm not a nuisance to you, am I? Damn. This girl's dangerous. Well, let's change the subject. Hey, any idea how Teddy's doing? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention it to you. 
And speaking of things uh, that people forgot to mention regarding Teddy, I forgot to talk about this when we had the human Teddy cutscene. A part of the anime that I love is, um, oh, I probably shouldn't spoil it. There's a great comedy moment that's not in the game where um, Teddy accidentally leaves his head behind at Juness and um, you'll, you'll see. Just, just look it up, trust me. You won't be disappointed. Check this out. I let him stay at my place. In return, he's now our official store mascot. That's a pretty good cover. Ah, so he's hiding in plain sight. Reverse psychology, huh? Man, he looks like one happy bear. He kept saying that he didn't want to go back, so I made him a deal. Now, since I've got nothing better to do, I'm gonna go bug him. Ooh, I wanna go too! Can I... Feel his soft fur. Hey, senpai? Now that I'm getting the hang of school, I want to go out more and see the sights. But I tend to get recognized everywhere I go, so I'm a little nervous about going out on my own. And you seem like the type of guy who knows all the cool spots in town. Well, we definitely do now that we've uh, explored enough on the motorbike. <laughs> In nearly any work of pop culture that features tarot, you can be certain that A, the lover's arcana will come up at some point, and B, it will be interpreted completely wrong. Many works take its name literally, but this card actually isn't about love or relationships at all. It's actually about choice. This is partly due to them changing the artwork for the card over time to become more of an Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden image, when originally it depicted a man having to choose between two women. In some variants, one of the women is more attractive while the other genuinely loves him, symbolising the choice between the right path and the easy path. It often represents having to make an irreversible choice with lasting consequences or having to decide to focus on one aspect of yourself at the exclusion of another. As I mentioned in the Hierophant entry, the Lover's Arcana follows it in the deck, which represents the Fool making a choice as to their own values and beliefs, after being exposed to the values and beliefs of others. Personas of the Lover's Arcana tend to be mythological fairies or nymphs, Raphael is the one outlier, he's been Lover's Arcana in every Persona game he appears in, and that's because he's the angel depicted in some illustrations of this card. Gameplay-wise, this is the Arcana to go to if you want healing. Every Persona will always learn some form of healing or revival spell, and the higher tier ones will usually have the full heal and full revive spells. Our lover's social link in Persona 4 is Risei Kujikawa. Now, as you can see, there aren't a lot of Personas of this Arcana, but you really, really, really want to rank this one up anyway, because Risei learns skills out of her social link, even in the vanilla PS2 version, but in Golden, they've been radically improved. In fact, that's an understatement. Her social link skills in Golden are completely and utterly busted. So ranking up this one is highly recommended if you want to make battles much easier on yourself. She's only available 3 days a week, and a lot of her higher ranks require a decent number of points. But spending time with her is well worth it. Risei's social link skills work a bit differently to everyone else. Because she doesn't actively participate in battle, she instead has a chance of raising the damage of an all-out attack. There's a way to improve this. 
If you ever have some time to kill, think of me, okay? But it requires you to go out of your way on very specific days. I'll get to that later, because we haven't unlocked that mechanic yet. Now come on, let's go pester Teddy. Teddy, hey! Tonight, we have a special report. The topic is the bizarre serial murder case in Inaba where the victims' bodies are discovered hanging upside down. Police have yet to announce any progress in the investigation since the discovery of a third victim. Our special report tonight is a summary of the events and the facts in the case thus far. They still haven't caught him? Promise, right? Oh, and by the way, you actually do, um, okay, so I'm pretty sure that we already have enough points for the next Nautical rank up, but if, say, you didn't, you should have a matching persona for answering that question, because that does increase the points you get towards justice for it.